In this live scan video, we'll be having a look at some of the lateral elbow structures involved in the genesis of pain. One of the main culprits, of course, is the common extensor tendon. And you can see its component tendons, and we're going to divide it into thirds today. There's also the underlying lateral ligament complex. And then there's the synovial plica and the joint capsule. And there's intra-articular causes that we need MRI for. So four initial probe positions. The first one will be at the supracondylar ridge, and then the next three will be in the common extensor tendon, anterior third, central third, and posterior third. And these are required to accurately then assess the underlying ligaments. So there's extensor cubby radialis longus, it's muscular. As we sweep down in the axial probe position, we can fall onto extensor cubby radialis brevis. Then we progressively move towards the olecranon, through the central and the posterior third, and you can see how the common extensor tendon thins out. We learn to then identify an interface, and this interface shows us where the ligament complex is. So those four probe positions again, ECRL, falling onto the anterior third of the common extensor tendon, quite a vertical probe approach, and then the probe slightly rotates clockwise to align with the forearm, and then oblique and swept in from behind to fall on the extensor carpi ulnaris, which is the posterior third. And that's the luckal, just underlying that. So more on those ligaments shortly. Underlying the ligaments, of course, is the joint capsule. And in some patients, there's a radiohumeral synovial plica. So this is an uh, embryological remnant and it may not be present, we need to be familiar with the look of cartilage around the capitellum and radial head and not confuse that with synovitis or fluid. So this fibroadipose synovial plica can enlarge and become contused and through trauma uh, or even genetically it can be enlarged and can cause a stiffness or a snapping and clicking in the joint. So while this is a 50-year-old patient, this synovial plica can be symptomatic in paediatric cases. So we look for fluid in this location and this location, look at the size and shape of the plica, have a look at the cartilage and the underlying bony surface, so you can see a little pit here, and consider it in the context of the other findings. So the ligament calcification here could be symptomatic, the, there is obvious tendinopathy in the common extensor tendon, and if we are looking for the main culprit in pain, we can also look with Doppler. So here's a synovial plica outlined in red with positive Doppler signal and extensive Doppler all along the enthesis. There's no cutoff for plica size, but it's an evolving area of science we need to be familiar with. These are the findings common in tendinopathy, but we're not primarily concerned with pathology today. I will mention that even in a normal looking tendon, we can identify Doppler if we extend the elbow slightly out of the 90 degrees flexion and have very light probe pressure so that we're not compressing the blood vessels. So that's a major pitfall when looking for neovascularity. Let's now sweep up above the radial head in a transverse plane and then also below it. So we're identifying three muscle bellies. Extensor carpi ulnaris to left of screen is most posterior. The extensor digit I minimise in the middle and extensor digit from the right of screen is most anterior. Now these all form a conjoint tendon, but if you isolate the extensor carpi ulnaris, it's a really good stepping stone for identifying the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. If we sweep in from behind the epicondylar ridge and with an oblique pro position, we can identify ECU and then just below that we can identify that interface with the ligament complex. So the best place to find the ligament complex is over the central third of the common extensor tendon. So we sweep down past ECRL. So you can see it's an axial plane relative to the humeral shaft. And then once we're below the supracondylar ridge, we oblique slightly to align our probe with the axis of the forearm, the long axis. This muscular triangle shouldn't be confused for fluid. This is extensor digitorum communis, so the muscle. 
So the Extensa carpi radialis brevis is a thick aponeurosis and it's deep, and you can see that it traverses the radiocapitella joint. When we rotate into a transverse plane on this aponeurosis, you can see it's quite broad. And as we move distally towards the wrist, it forms this undulating line called the scorpion's tail. And there's no clear distinction between the ECRB and the ECRL muscular bellies. But we do see a distinction with the extensor digital communis. So we can follow that EDC all the way to the wrist. And of course, that's compartment four at the wrist, containing extensor tendons for the digits. Moving on to the lateral collateral ligaments then, and we'll talk about three main ligaments. The first being the annular ligament, and its insertion is shown with a yellow arrow, so it encircles the radial head. And you've got the radial collateral ligament, which inserts into the annular ligament. And posterior to that is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. And you can see how it's oriented towards the ulna, so it inserts into the supinated crest. If we place our probe over the radial collateral ligament, we may detect ligament tears. So these are tears of the proximal origin. This also is a ligament tear, not to be confused with a tendon tear. And when we're over the anterior common extensor tendon, this is definitely not a ligament tear. Now you'll notice a normal degree of anisotropy when you're on a ligament. Watch how the probe is rotated obliquely to find the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. So it sits under ECU. We don't want to see annular ligaments, so we rotate that radial head out the way and point our probe over towards the ulna and we push the distal end of the transducer really hard to flatten out this thin ligament here. And this is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament insertion. And you may notice a little artery that's pulsing just over the distal insertion under Ancaneus. The other way we can identify it is with this cobra position. So find the distal biceps insertion with the pronated forearm. And then we just move down towards the olecranon and we can fall onto this luccal insertion that way as well. So cobra view, pronate the forearm, find the distal biceps insertion and axial view, slide south towards the bed and we can fall onto the distal luccal that way. Now it may share a common insertion with the annular ligament. With the annular ligament, we can find it more easily in an axial probe orientation just by sliding around the radial head. And it's usually a little more proximal to the distal luccal insertion. So back to ECRB. Now, it's only as we slide more posteriorly onto the central third of the common extensor tendon that we'll notice the radial collateral ligament. And this anisotropy really gives it away. So that's normal appearance of the RCL. Distally, it inserts into the annular ligament, shown in yellow. And you may notice effusions in the annular recess when the joint is abnormal. One more comment about ECRB. Um, so ECRB overlies the radiocapitella joint. So you'll see how close it is to the joint. So pathology of the joint can involve bony osteophytes, and they can stick up and cause an abrasion into the ECRB aponeurosis. There it is there. So the muscular triangle over the top is EDC, once again. Have a look at where the joint capsule is. And look for an effusion here. Also look for bony osteophytes. Now, as we move towards that central component, 50% of what we're seeing can be ligament. This interface is what we need to look for when identifying ligaments. Finally, in your complete assessment, it's also worth noting that the deep branch of the radial nerve is beneath this scorpion tail of the ECRB. So you'll notice it here, just scooting over the surface of the supinator. So complete sonographer's report should note any pathology causing extrinsic compression around the radial nerve and its internal branches.